Welcome back to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. It is time for the championship round. It's been a great season, guys. A lot of you stuck with me through the whole year, had a lot of fun, put in a lot of work. Like I said, the podcast isn't going anywhere after the games are finished. We got football news to talk about. We're going to be doing some NBA picks. We're going to be talking about the draft. So there's a lot of things that this podcast is going to do in the offseason. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Of course, you guys know the thing I love the most is doing the picks. But this is a year-round thing. And I hope you guys stick with me during the offseason. So first, I want to talk about this past weekend with the games that took place, because I did that last week, too. I talked about the wild card rounds when we did the divisional picks. So this week, I'm going to talk about the divisional games before we do the championship round picks. And a lot of people say, well, Giff, you complain when you lose, and then when you win, you don't say anything. And it's – I only call it like I see it. Like this past weekend, I really didn't see anything that was – weird or odd or out of the norm for a regular football game most of these games were very clean the nfl let these guys play and that's what you want to see you don't want to see interference the only thing that i saw that was remotely weird and odd because it usually doesn't happen is the Bengals bills game somehow you know the Bengals are down two three offensive linemen And for the entirety of the game, for a full four quarters, they didn't have any penalties called on them. I believe there was a couple of false starts, which, I mean, the refs have to call that because everybody can see it. It's an automatic penalty for whatever team commits those. Those are on you. But there was no holding, no defensive holding, no, um, you know, hands to the face. I mean, nothing, virtually nothing called on the Bengals that entire game. That helped the Bills, and the Bills kept getting stupid penalties and, you know, holding calls, defensive, uh, defensive holding, things like that. So I just felt like it was a little bit weird that the Bengals got that. And usually the only people that have gotten that luxury in the past have been superstar quarterbacks, and we talked about that. Joe Burrow, everybody believes, like, he's the next Tom Brady, and he certainly plays like Tom Brady. Strict pocket passer, very accurate, very good. And again, the last time I saw something like that was when Tom Brady was in New England on his hot streak in his heyday. There was a lot of times where they just did not get penalties called on them during games to help them out. And you could, yeah, I mean, I know the people are going to say, well, Giff, yeah, I mean, but that's because they're well coached. Yeah, all right, bullshit. I mean, there's penalties that you can call on a lot of plays. It's just a matter of if the refs want to call them or not. I think you guys know that, especially holding. And again, you know, the Bengals down three offensive linemen and there's no holding. You're telling me their backups came in and didn't hold at all. I mean, look, the Bills D-line, not very good. Um, The Bills are more speed. They're not power. And we know the Bengals handle teams with speed very well. So most of the game was realistic. The Buffalo Bills did not deserve to win that game. But at the same time, are the Bengals perfect? I don't know. But that game more or less was clean, just the refs. Uh, The Cowboys 49ers game, see now, I lost that game. I had the Cowboys and I lost. I didn't complain. That was extremely realistic. Two very good defenses going at it. It was a very close game for a long time. And then, of course, the difference was Dak Prescott turning the ball over multiple times, which is realistic because he's done that before in the past. And we've seen it happen multiple times this season. And we know that Dak's never gotten over the hump. He doesn't have the confidence. And he just went up against, you could argue, the top defense in the league in the 49ers. So the fact that he did throw picks when he throws picks against teams that aren't as good, uh, that was very realistic to me. I had no complaints. I lost that game, but I felt like the game was very realistic. I don't think that just because I lose, there's tampering involved. So the people that say that, you know, I I say go pound the wall. I mean, that's bullshit. I I don't think that way. The Giants-Eagles game, very realistic. The Eagles are a top-notch team stacked from top to bottom, Uh, defensively especially. I mean, they got a great defensive line with a lot of veteran rotational pieces up front. Then you have a stout secondary with two shutdown corners on the outside with Bradbury and Slay. 
and you're going up against a Giants offense where they really don't have anybody to throw to. Uh, Daniel Jones is throwing to a bunch of number three receivers out there. Saquon is really the only number one offensive weapon that they have at running back. But you stop the run, you take that out of the equation, you force Daniel Jones to throw and not allow Daniel Jones to run, and you create a lot of problems for the Giants. What the Giants have to do this offseason is go get some top-flight receivers. They need to get a good tight end. They need to bring in a couple really good receivers, and then I think we'll see that Giants offense open up and be able to contend against the better teams in the league. But the Eagles lock them down defensively, which is very realistic. And then offensively, you know, they had their way. You know, physically, the offensive line dominated. That's fair because the Giants really don't have a top flight front seven. They got some good players, some good defensive tackles, things like that. But they're undersized at the linebacker position and the defensive end position. So the Eagles, with one of the best offensive lines, if not the best offensive line, brutalized them. And then, of course, they had play action. Jalen Hurts doing his thing. You know, tight ends, receivers got open. The Giants really don't have a deep secondary as it is. Um, Obviously, that's, you know, Xavier McKinney coming back. And I understand that that was a big thing. Uh, Their corner position got a little bit healthy towards the end of the year. Everybody thought that was going to be the difference, but it wasn't. I mean, the Eagles are a top-notch team. The Giants still have building to do. That blowout felt very realistic to me. And the Jaguars-Chiefs game was very realistic, too. If Mahomes didn't get hurt, I think we would have seen this probably Chiefs win by double digits, if not three scores. I think that's what would have happened. But that injury was real. I mean, I saw it. um, Sometimes you question things, and you're like, man, is he really hurt? But, I mean, the way that Mahomes' leg got stretched out and bent, you can't fake that. And I saw it and I, it could have been worse than just a, an ankle sprain, which it ends up, that's the case what it is. Um, so the fact that the Jaguars were able to cover the spread by, you know, just a point and a half that was realistic to me because of that injury. Um, other than that, the bottom line is chiefs won, And that's how a lot of people saw that game going. So with that, let's get to the championship round and get these picks up and we're going to have a two week gap between this coming weekend and the Super Bowl. So like I said, guys, I'll be throwing out some NBA picks for you guys. We'll be talking about some news. There's a couple teams that I want to talk about, like the Cleveland Browns. So there's some things that I want to get to, but let's get these picks up. First game, 49ers plus two and a half versus the Eagles. I have the Eagles to win and cover. I'm going to go under 46 and a half because you got two really good defenses going at it here. And if you're going to tease the game, tease it Eagles plus four and a half. I don't really think there's any other way you can go. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at here is the weapons for both teams. Now, I love Debo Samuel. I like George Kittle. I like Christian McCaffrey. He is a little bit banged up, by the way, but I do think he's more or less going to be at his best in this game. But I like what the Eagles got a little bit more. Now, both these teams got good offensive lines. I think the Eagles O-line is a little bit better, but these two teams got here because they got powerful run blocking O-lines. Let's put that out there. But I like the weapons of the Eagles a little bit more. A.J. Brown, he's just on another level. Like, Debo Samuel's really good. Like, last season he was amazing, but there's just something about A.J. Brown to me that is just dynamic all-star, over-the-top good, where he can take over games. Again, I know Debo has done that in the past, but I just think A.J. Brown is another animal. And then that the fact that they got Devonta Smith as a number two, I and I think he's a number one as it stands, extremely elusive, can pretty much catch anything that comes his way, great at reading the field after the catch. And, yeah, I mean, Kittle's great, Debo's great, McCaffrey out of the backfield, sure, but to have these two receivers on the outside work, I just feel like that's going to be a little bit more potent in this game. Not to mention the Eagles got Goddard at tight end. He's no pushover. Miles Sanders coming out of the backfield. He's no joke either. So it's not like the Eagles are vastly outmatched 
with talent because the 49ers, a lot of the times when they get their W's, it's just simply because they have top flight talent, top flight offensive talent, and other teams don't. They don't have the defensive depth to cover these guys. That's the other argument now. So I like the weapons more for the Eagles, but then the other argument is that the Eagles defense can handle the 49ers. Whereas, you know, I look at the 49ers defense and I'm like, mm, that's secondary. It's suspect. The Eagles got the offensive line to keep that front seven off of Jalen Hurts, not even to mention that Hurts can run to avoid pressure. But the 49ers don't really have a deep secondary to handle both Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown. Again, not to mention Goddard at tight end, too. So that's a factor for me. Ward in the secondary is good. You know, I think he could give Devonta Smith some headaches. But one of those two guys are going to be open most of the time. That's how I'm looking at that. And then the Eagles defense, you know, we talked about it just, you know, a few minutes ago when I talked about last week's games. An extremely good secondary. A rotating physical defensive line. So, for me, that's a big thing. Because they're going to be able to stop the run for the 49ers. McCaffrey's not going to be able to run on these guys as easily as I think people think he might. Um and I think that's going to pigeonhole a young quarterback in Brock Purdy. Because if he's not going to have a full Kyle Shanahan playbook to work with, which we're talking about play action, moving parts, all of that, if the run game doesn't exist and the Eagles defensive line doesn't allow that to exist, the game plan is not going to work for the 49ers. Because, you, again, you guys have seen how they win games. They get the run game going a little bit. Offensive line dominates a far less superior defensive line. Play action starts happening, and then the defense doesn't know what to do. And then you got McCaffrey coming out here, Debo coming out here. But again, the Eagles have everything to start from top to bottom to shut the run down, stop the play action, make Brock Purdy just straight up pass it. And again, you got two lockdown corners on top of a good defensive line. And I think that's where things just go over the top. And they make it so the 49ers can't are going to have a hard time moving the football. I think at least for the first half, the Eagles are going to have a little bit of a hard time moving the football too. But as the game goes on, things I think are going to open and sway in the Eagles' favor because of this matchup. <clears throat> Next game, Bengals are now only minus one versus the Chiefs. That actually started off as Bengals minus two, dropped the whole point. So... I think that tells you that a lot of people think this might be a weird game. Like, you know, people always say think like a better because you're always thinking Vegas is trying to fool you. But I've told you guys before, the wheel always comes back around. Like Vegas is going to throw you guys out there like two to three weeks of bullshit where you're like, what the fuck? Like, that's not even football. That's like bullshit. But then, like, all of a sudden, when you, like, get on that bandwagon, then they reverse it on you. Realism comes in. And you're like, oh, fuck. Like, now I should have went with the obvious team that's better. So don't sway away from – I mean, we never sway away on this podcast. Um, don't go against yourself. The Bengals are the better team. And you're getting them at basically a pick here. I'm going with the Bengals to win and cover. I'm going to go over 47. I'm going to tease the Bengals to plus six if you're going to tease it. And where aren't the Bengals better? I mean, you look at I me mean, quarterback for one. I mean, Joe Burrow's healthy, ready to rock, extremely efficient pocket passer. You could say he's the most accurate quarterback in football. Mahomes is hurt. Mahomes isn't going to be able to trot for first downs and use his legs as much. I think that's fair to say at the very least that's going to hurt him in this game. Sometimes injuries – are overstated and things like that. I don't think that's the case here. I believe Mahomes is really hurt. Now, that's not the end-all, be-all for me with this game. That's just the tip of the iceberg. But that is a pretty big deciding factor, the fact that Mahomes isn't going to be himself. That's number one. Number two, the receivers. I mean, Jamar Chase is just another animal. T. Higgins is not that far behind. And Tyler Boyd as a number three is amazing. He, I think he would be a number two on most teams. Then you got Mixon playing out of his mind. The O-line for the Bengals still playing pretty good, even with guys out. And they're trying their best to get Kappa and Jonah Williams back on the field, which there's a really good chance that could happen. 
especially with Jonah Williams, considering, like we mentioned in the last podcast, he played a year ago with a dislocated kneecap. He's got the same injury this year. So who's to say he's not going to suit up and play very good? <laughs> so I think the Bengals got that. You know, there's no there's no real issue, no worry with me there. The Bengals have the ability to run the football in this game because they got an all-star like Joe Mixon. Last time I checked, who's the Chiefs running back? Jet McKinnon? Who? I mean, what? Uh, Clyde edwards alaire is gone. So not only is Mahomes hobbled, but they're not, they don't have a run game to lean on. And outside of Travis Kelsey, who is a number one legit all pro tight end, I get that. He's going to be hard to stop, you know, no matter what team you play. But they don't have a top flight number one receiver. They got a bunch of number two, low bottom number twos and number three type receivers with speed. And the, the Bengals last season <clears throat> already showed that even with the Chiefs, with the run game and Tyree Kill, the Bengals still physically shut that down because the Bengals play good against speedy teams. They know how to beat them. It's how they beat the Buffalo Bills. That's how they're going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs this coming weekend. And again, guys, just think to yourself here. Andy Reid's been coaching in the league for multiple years. So it's not like a year is going to change things and he's going to come out with this great game plan. No. Uh, again, if he couldn't get it done with Tyree Kill, Miko Hardman, Travis Kelsey, all those guys out there, and a run game, good offensive line last season. If the Bengals beat them up last season the, in the playoffs the way that they did, what are they going to do this year when the Bengals are fully healthy, ready to rock, everybody's on the field, and the Chiefs are obviously have all these issues going on? And then that that's not even – I mean, there's more. I mean, the Chiefs' secondary is not that great. And I just mentioned that the Bengals have one of the best, if not the best, receiving core in football. Who in the Chiefs' secondary is going to stop Jamar Chase, let alone T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd? Not even to mention Mixon on a screenplay. If it gets, you know, if they really push the uh, secondary back and then the Bengals fool them with a screenplay, it's just there's too much. There's too much in the Bengals' favor here. I mean, really? I really can't see anything where the Chiefs can lean on in this game to get the W. The only thing I would say, this would be the game where it would be like, like I said, you know, the NFL pulling a fast one, just it, it, making it a little unrealistic because Mahomes would have to be unbelievable for them to get the W in this game. I mean, it would all fall on him. Andy Reid would have to have the best play calling of his life and they would have to hope that the Bengals don't have a huge game, like come come at them 100%. And you know the Bengals are coming 100%. If they went into Buffalo while it was snowing, and it didn't even – I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, the Bang, I don't even think the Bengals broke a sweat in that game. Like, they beat the Buffalo Bills without even sweating. What are they going to do to the Kansas City Chiefs that are hobbled? So, with that, guys – Make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Like I said, the podcast isn't going anywhere. During the regular season, I try to keep it to one video with the picks because I want to focus on that. There's a lot of work that goes into that. I want to like just focus slowly on trying to make the right pick. But, you know, like I told you guys, after this week, you're going to see some news videos. We're going to be doing some NBA picks. You know, we'll be doing some other stuff too. So uh, appreciate everybody who's been following. Uh, Keep, you know, hitting the subscribe button, keep hitting the like button. And I know some of you guys like tune out for the off season. You guys go do other things. And then, you know, you guys always come back during NFL season. So some of you guys I'll see next year, but I hope some of you guys stick around or at least periodically check in with the podcast to see what we're doing. So again, guys, thank you. Hit the like button, share the videos and subscribe.